there was so many things to unpack last episode, as always. Go check out the analysis video for my full thoughts, but a lot of important things. The white whale, first of all. It's interesting how the merchants and Rem were forgotten by Otto, but the sword saint won, even though all three were presumably killed by the white whale, meaning there's a different way of how they got killed. Maybe the white whale has a curse or some sort of magic that requires you to forget about them. After that, there's a lot of moments where Subaru is really just like lashing out at Otto and Amelia. But at the end of the day, it was the insecurity, the projections of him feeling helpless, him fucking up and getting mad at himself when he's yelling at the other party. There's very interesting dialogue with Betty regarding Roswell and how Roswell's future is secured, even though everything is going down the shithole. One of the most mysterious people of this show that I just still cannot comprehend because the actions that he is doing is contradicting his goals of killing the dragon and melee on the throne. Satala just just doing this to Subaru's heart, right? Instead of just like going this time, he decided to kill Amelia. There's two separate interpretations. I think it's not mutually exclusive. The first, the most intuitive one is you did something that I warned you about before. Therefore, I'm going to prove it that the next time you do this shit, I will kill someone you love. And then the other side of, well, it's the Witch of Envy. What is she envious of? She loves Subaru. Subaru loves Amelia. Therefore, the Witch of Envy was envious that Subaru told Amelia about Return by Death, which is technically a secret with Satala and Subaru. That's another interpretation that I think does make sense. But the answer that I don't have to is, why the fuck? Does she love Subaru so much? Is she spying on him back on Earth? And if so, why specifically him? There is something special about him that goes beyond his desire to save Amelia in the loot cellar in the first run when I thought that he got the regression powers. I have no clue. But if you ignore the psychological suffering of Subaru for a second and really think about it, she does give us an OP ability to restart and try again. And with each run, she gives us more of her love, the witch's stench, which is honestly the thing that's letting us see the unseen hand. So again, if you ignore the psychological horror and the suffering component of regression, she is helping. It's just that we don't know how to utilize this. Hopefully Subaru can like literally use like authorities of different sins and use powers. Wouldn't that be amazing to be able to use cult magic? Because he does have like the witch's miasma, probably the most, right? And then... The other thing had happened is what other really important part was there? I think that's pretty much it. By the end, Amelia is dead. We're plopped out. Biko didn't want us to see us die in front of her. And now Puck showed up at the end in his full form, not in his contracted form. And he called us a bunch of degenerates. Let's begin today's reaction. <laughs> Damn! So strong, dude. No, Who do you do? It? Yeah. <laughs> Unseen head? Puck's getting twisted! I think so! But damn. Shut up, Subaru, or be quiet. I don't care what you- I guess Puck is really mad, huh? Puck is upset because Amelia's dead, and obviously, you know, you were too late this time. Well, not this time, but he's still fucked up, I guess. <laughs> Puck! Puck! Unseen head! Why is he so cute? Metrogeus is so fucking cute. Yeah, you should attack first. That's slothful. I love him so much, man. What is your eyes doing? Doesn't work on him. Big cat form. Dialogue is very interesting. But this is the big puck form, right? This is the big puck form that we saw at the end. What does he say? <laughs> Then grow a thousand shadows, half of what Satala could do. I don't know what the hell a shadow means, a mere half. Satala can grow 2,000 shadows. I don't know what shadows means, but 2,000, okay. Uh, is the shadows in, 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 referring to the fucking unseen hand? I don't know. Puck Satala lore. I need to know more. How does Puck so much? 2,000 hands? Maybe Puck. Yeah, this is the form where he says Nemure, right? Sleep along with my daughter. Puck is the dad of Amelia, figuratively, right? In episode 15, this is what kind of showed us mercy. And the same voice actor. Again. A mere spirit? Everyone has glazed 
Pot being a great spirit, but Betteruki says, fuck it, you're a mere spirit? Few decades. How old are you, Pot? Damn, dude! Betteruki is spitting! Straight up! Challenging Puck about how you're wasting your infinite life while my shortness, I'm devoting it all to the fucking witch. How dare you? <laughs> yeah, death is not a punishment. It looks like he's fucking welcoming it. How do we punish this guy? By having Subaru have more love from the witch and cucking Betrugus. Betrugus literally feels cucked, right? Cause like he devoted his entire life to Satella, and she likes this fucking neat instead that showed up out of nowhere. But according to Betrugus's logic, what did we just say? It's not about how long you've done it, right? It doesn't matter. Time has nothing to do with the desires. So Subaru, you could say that even though he's been here for such a short amount of time, he is more, uh, I don't know, devoted to the witch's love. I don't fucking know. <laughs> Ordeals completed. The ordeals completed because, and it says first of many ordeals last episode, right? Betrugus was very intent with the wording. He was happy that Subaru showed up, called him diligent for even having the body of Amelia before they got to the mansion. Amelia dying is the first ordeal. I thought that the ordeal was some sort of ceremony to awaken Satella, but there's multiple ordeals, multiple steps. <laughs> Crazy cultist, man. Again, Betanagus is like, nah, I've already done my job. This is great. Kill me now. I can be reunited with the witch. Bro, the cultist, man. So crazy. Now, Puck and Subaru. What's up? Yeah, we did break that promise. There's something funny about Emilia's corpse just still here like last episode when she just plopped onto the ground I don't know just getting buried by snow it's, the, it's like a weird fucked up humor with corpses just being mishandled you know so why is a promise so special to a spirit arch user it's like beyond just faith it's like a promise is because Spirit art users also makes a contract with a spirit, which is also a promise, and therefore it's that more important. Real promise came here, and third. I mean, we were kind of guessing that when Amelia dies, that Puck goes berserk, but I didn't think this is part of the contract. <laughs> what? In accordance with my contract, if Leah dies, I will kill the world. And Amelia signed this shit willingly. All right, fuck it, fuck the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> right? Wait, Reinhardt versus Puck. What would happen in each timeline? That that is so crazy to think about. Imagine that. In every timeline, when we fuck up and Amelia's dead and Puck is about to destroy the world. Reinhardt must have clashed against Puck in the future, right? That is actually so crazy to think about. Like, different multiverses and different possibilities. Damn. <laughs> That's that important? What is their relationship? I need to know, like, Amelia and Puck. Like, what is their lore in the forest before they even was found by Roswell? <laughs> Is it possible to make a contract with Puck right now because Subaru is so good with spirits? I don't know. I just thought in my head, I was a corny, a corny thing to say right now is saying, Emilia isn't my entire reason for existing. I'll give you a reason right now, Puck. Make a contract with me. Work with me. And Subaru is good with spirits. We've seen this before. I wonder if that's possible though. Maybe to get revenge against the people that killed Emilia. Cult witches? You never know. Whoa, 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 more lore. Gluttony. I, it seems a trouble being has been drawn here. The white whale is showing up. Even Pucks calls it. But gluttony. Oh, I suppose they call it the white whale now. So more lore. In the past, it was called gluttony. It's a sin we know. But it's white whale now. That's so interesting. Gluttony. Maybe like there was like the witch of gluttony or like an archbishop of gluttony that was associated with the whale. 
Or maybe the whale is the arch... No, the whale is a witch fiend. It's not an archbishop, but there's a theme of gluttony tied with the white whale. <laughs> is Betrick still laughing right now? Wait, what is this laugh? Who's laughing? <laughs> Who's laughing? What's this? That's what it is, right? It's himself? What the fuck is going on right now? I thought he was frozen and dead. But he's laughing. It's the voice of a man I hated to death. Obviously, Subaru does hate himself, right? There's probably some... Sad, neat backstory that we'll see in the future about why he's like this, but more characterization and kind of lore of this character. <laughs> Laughing at myself. <laughs> Not in vain, you know more now. Taida <laughs> desne. Oh, this shit. Hey, it's been a while since we've heard that one. <laughs> Are we back, Apple guy? Rem, Rem, Rem. Okay, Rem back, Rem back. Easy. But let's be cautious. Because what did I say last episode? Just like how it would be cheap if we got over the Emilia conversation problem with the simple reset. Would this be also cheap? I don't know. Right now, Rem is back. But I'll try to, like, let's try to keep a note of, like, if other people says Rem or not. Creepy Sasha. Hey, where's the Appa guy? Where's the Appa guy, bro? Y'all don't see the Appa guy today. What the fuck? I think he's just tired from the other runs. Look the bags in his eye. Oh, where are we going? Oh, are we running? Where are we going, bro? Oh, also, what episode is it today? Oh, it's 18! Oh, shit! This is the Rem episode, right? Every motherfucker's been glazing this shit forever. Okay, this is the Rem episode. Okay, 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 here we go. Is <laughs> he? She likes it when she gets forced to do something sometimes, huh? Alright, gotcha. Is this development? Is this growth? Is he good now? Bro? Based on the dialogue, it sounds like he's got his head back. Like, he's learned from the previous runs, and now he's humbled himself, and now he has a plan. I'm not sure if he's gaslighting himself, though. What's the answer? Ask for help? I mean, we thought about this, right? We said, fuck all this bullshit, let's just get out of here. Surprised he hasn't tried this before, to be honest. Yeah? I think it's feasible after all that bullshit so far. I'd be willing to just run away with Rem. Absolutely, I would. By the way, is, this is not the same place that we were talking to Emily in the first episode about what her name was and it's Satala and we were like raising her up, right? This is not the same area because I, I, I'm not sure. Is it? Different area, right? それか北に向かう。えっと、南の帝国どっちか寒いのは苦手だから個人的には西が一応した。になるかも。今の。No no 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 no. There was a building and there was a bridge. It was when he was first told Satella and then the bridge was the half elf disclosure there. It's two separate moments. World building. I like to see different kingdoms. Who's gonna tell her? <laughs> Damn, Rem still believes in Subaru's... He, he believes in him so much that even this of running away, she thinks that it's to help Emilia and Roswell. Now we're trying to run away from all that shit. You have no clue what we went through. 
That's what it seems like right now. But there's you haven't tried everything, you know? I think that after the lessons we learned from the three separate candidates and learned understanding how to negotiate better and understanding mutual benefits and trying to give the other party a reason to help us and creating alliances, strong friends, and then, I don't know, we can handle the fucking whale and the mansion shit together. That's got to be the way. But right now, it's like, it does seem impossible because he's not even thinking about that possibility. I give up too. Honestly, I would give him a long time ago. みんながみんな俺にそう、それを認めたくなくて、必死で否定し続けたけど。ああ、誰も俺を必要となん。That's a very interesting dialogue here. ただダメなんだ。みんながみんな俺にそう。That's what everyone has been telling me. We can't stay here. Everyone's been telling me. それを認めたくなくて、必死で否定し続けたけど。So I denied it, but I think it's been so long. 誰も俺を必要となんかし。that you could come to the conclusion based off of all the actions that you've done for yourself rather than for Amelia. But isn't this him trying to convince himself? Puck said it too. Puck said we committed three great sins though, though. He didn't say we should just give up. That's not what he said at all. Now the implication is one could delude himself into believing this after all those failed runs and finally just giving up. I don't know, I, I think it's more of like a giving up and justifying in your head why this is okay. No, fight back, bro. You can do it. Petra's eyes. Rem gonna reject? Me or someone else? What an ultimatum. <laughs> to Anastasia place? Do you want to go to Kararagi? I don't know, but if, if Anastasia is anything like a late stage capitalism, you ain't buying a fucking house, bro. You gonna fucking be renting a one bedroom apartment with like 20 people sharing that shit, paying like $1,000 per month. You know that. Well, I don't know. Uh, completely off topic, but like, if we're thinking about Anastasia, I wonder what kind of kingdom she would make, because she's all about money. But like, if she is like a benevolent ruler and a generous one, she could uplift people out of poverty using her economic wise skills and, you know, have everyone be fine. Or the rich get richer and the poor gets poorer. I'm not really sure what kind of civilization it would be with Anastasia, but Kararagi, huh? Maybe? <laughs> I want Rem to say no. I do. I want Rem to stand her ground and not fold for Subaru and say, You can't do it. We can do this together. I like this. I like it when Rem stands her ground. Now explain why. She'll make you laugh. <laughs> Running away? Are these two dragons in the sky right now? What the fuck? Anyways, it's more symbolism of a couple. She thought about Kararagi already? She had a script in her head. Alright, we can have like a nice family. She's thought about it all. Even a family? Subaru is the liability here because of his lack of education, can only do manual labor jobs, and is holding the family back in this imaginary life. Buy a house, a family, kids? A shop? Sell Ram's steam taters? What is he thinking right now? He's thinking about the denial. I thought that, or is he shocked that, that Rem even thought about this different, like, high, like a theoretical, like, life, right? Because, like, Subaru is thinking, we, sh we should do it now. But Rem has already thought about it to this extent. Is he realizing how much Rem really loves him? Is he realizing how much shock he is because Rem denied and she's speaking in a nice way? I'm not sure. 
その恥ずかしいですけど子供なんか鬼と人のハーフに。ハーフ demon ハーフ human bro。We could have a kid together! But it's not happening, right? 子供とか鬼と人のハーフになるの女の子でも双子でも三つ子でも可愛い子になりますよ想像通りにうまくいくことばかりじゃないと思う But it's fine because we would have each other She thought I had so much bro 肩身が狭くなることもある Like the level of detail the concern out of Subaru not like feeling out of place because there's too many girls and not boys like Dude She's really, really thought about this. I don't think she's thinking about that. I mean, we've seen you die before us plenty of times already. She even thought about her dying wish. She's so good. Then why are we going? <laughs> then why are you fucking rejecting me, bitch? You literally gave us a play by play analysis, detailed arcs of our next 40 years, and you're still gonna say no? Bitch, what the fuck are you selling me this delusion for? <laughs> With a smile. <laughs> It wouldn't be right, Roswell, Amelia Sama. I would be leaving behind the Subaru kun that I love the most. The Subaru kun that we saw in Arc 2. The heroic Subaru. The one that saved everybody. That one that gave Rem the confidence to move forward and live for a happy tomorrow. Rem, I can return by that. You can't do that. Believe me. Surely, Rem will show you how to do it. Let's go back now. Let's take a short break. Let's get some rest. Let's get some rest. Let's get some rest. We should think. Oh, what was that frame right there? Oh, it was Puck. It was it was today Puck. I am done da. Kangae tan da. Kurushin tan da. Ame tan da. Akiramer no wa kantan de. Akiramer no wa kantan. Chill. Don't get mad at her. She didn't mean it that way, bro. Ame no ga kantan na wa ke ne e baro ga. Ore ga nani mo shinai de. Nani mo kangae. Assari to nani mo kamo nage shite de. Oh man, again. Look at these different scenes, right? All the suffering moments, even this moment. Even last time, I remember how he was like projecting himself and like getting angry at himself, but talking to Amelia and Otto. And no one knows his sacrifices. <laughs> Giving up is harder. It was so much easier for me to think there was something I could do, but in all those different runs, we just keep suffering and suffering, literally at wit's end, there's nothing we can do. And then he decided to give up after doing all that, now he's getting confronted, but again, it's... Everything comes out like this because Rem obviously doesn't remember all the different shit we've done afterwards, but it's also just like him, again, just like so agonized and pained and coming out in the wrong way. <laughs> There's more we can do. Don't give up, bro. Dude, the master chorus. I think like the best voice actor of the show could be Subaru, man. I think it could be. All the path lead to one thing giving up. There's no way out. All these different horrific ends, right? That's the fucking shit that no one else remembers but us and... Obviously, to Rem, it might seem crazy, but, you know, no one can ever know except us and those people that have witnessed the successful runs. Ooh. 
スバルくんがどんなに辛い思いをそんなに苦しんでいるのかレムには分かりません軽はずみに言ってはいけないとも思いますでもリマス What? That you're marvelous? You're special? スバルくんは途中で何かを諦めるなんてできない人だってことレムは知っていますスバルくんは未来を諦めるなんてできない人だって知っていますスバルくんは未来を諦めるなんてできない人だって Remember what Amelia said to Subaru in bed, saying, It must be so nice that I idealized Amelia in your head. I'm not like that! <laughs> Could you imagine if Subaru hit Rem with the same fucking card? Bro, that would be comical and sad at the same time. No, you can do it, bro. We've seen it. That's right. <laughs> When you have small hands, you need more friends, you need allies, and you're right. It, the, it is impossible from the start because you're trying to carry this shit by yourself, right? We can do it together, though. Bro, mask off moment again. Again, like, this is the true Subaru, right? This is not the seemingly confident Giga Chat that we saw in Arc 1, right? There's so much complexities of this character that we have no clue of because we don't know his backstory just yet. But it's finally coming out. This is the true Subaru. The true Subaru who's suffering. You can, you can be better too, though. But, like, the difference between this and the last time is that he would get mad and project these things upon the, uh, like, the other side, like Otto and Emilia last time. But this time, it's directed himself. Look at all these different scenes, right? Getting, quote-unquote, scanned by Anastasia, right? The All these different moments that he just failed over and over again. But I think that there's progress. He's reflecting on himself. Like, this is no longer projection. He's, like, literally, this part, acceptance. Bro, the level of awareness right now, everything, he knew all of it from the start. It was just a fucking lie. This all the acting he's been doing, and then last episode, remember, that was the part where he lashed out projecting, and this time he's like, yep. I am the trash. No, I don't! What did you do back on Earth? Neat! Damn. <laughs> Let me breathe! Holy, this... Every line he's saying is just piercing my soul! Wanting to accomplish something when I've never done anything goes beyond the limits of arrogance. And yeah, for sure, he was arrogant. For sure, he was prideful. But I don't think that means he's useless. I don't think that means that he should just give up. We have seen him overcome challenges that should have been impossible. But when he humbled himself and asked for help and got proper help, we were able to overcome those challenges. And the person known as Rem standing in front of you believes you're special because of that. Of course, this is his true side coming out, right? Truly, that all the sins, all the patheticness, like the character who is Natsuki Subaru, I think he's focusing too much on the negatives. While this may be true, I think there's positive as well that he's neglecting, and I hope that Rem can, like, remind him of that. Also, no normal person can just be this aware. I genuinely believe for you to be in this level of enlightenment to psychoanalyze and deconstruct yourself like this, like that's fucking crazy. I don't think most people have this awareness. I think most people would always blame society, always blame everything else, and say that they are fine or they are the they are suffering and they're just like this low life of society, not because of my fault, but everyone else. But this dude recognizes it. Pampered life. Pampered life. So is his parents rich? 
Is he just from like a pretty well-off family and he just never did anything? <laughs> Both of our lives. Both of our leaked, leaked, leaked. I have no character? I think you have so much character. I think that right now, and we're only on episode 18, Natsuki Subaru is one of the most complex and developed characters that I've ever seen in an East. Is it correct to say Isekai? I mean, if you really think about most main characters, they're pretty... St they're, they're, they're not as deep as this. And they don't need to be, right? Just because your main character isn't complex doesn't mean it's bad. Plenty of characters in shows work fine without a main character being this developed. But, like, the amount of, like, awareness that he has after overcoming and failing different challenges over and over again and having, like, this brutal reality just spat in front of his face breaking down mentally, rebuilding and breaking down. It is just kind of crazy, like, how deep of a character this is. Now, this might not continue after a certain point. I wonder how much development you can really do with a character like this, but so far, it's just been a fucking masterclass. That old man. Wilhelm! Wilhelm, right? Because Wilhelm always, like, saw right through Subaru, I think, through the fucking sword lessons as well as just, like, you got something to say that one episode where we didn't even get to see Subaru's eyes when he approached Car uh, Krush's mansion? Were you just lashing out? It was an act. Acting to look like he's being productive rather than being productive. Like that one where it's just, like, he's not selfless. He's acting selfless. <laughs> That's like his freedom, huh? That's like the release of like, I wanted to be told there was nothing I could do. And if I was told that after acting all tough, then I don't have to pretend anymore. I'm absolved of all this burden on me. That's so deep. Just nah, I say that your awareness of this is proof that you have changed. And I don't even think that these qualities about who's always worried about how others see me. I'm just a small, cowardly, filthy piece of trash. I think a lot of people are like that. I think this is like overly too harsh on oneself. But of course he's going to be because he's so depressed and angry right now. I honestly don't even think Sibir was that bad. I think a lot of people are like this. He's honestly, a lot of people, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea when I say he's a flawed character. And people say, no, he's a normal kid. And I agree. Normal people, normal children, 17-year-old kids that have no social fucking skills. They're flawed. And that's normal. That's perfectly fine. And to be able to be aware of that after, you know, failing over and over and trying to pursue this, like, correction and be better. That's what it's all about. That, that's literally it. <laughs> Rem, Glaze, let's go. Build him up. <laughs> Is this rock bottom? I've been waiting for him to hit rock bottom. I think a lot of people even mentioned the seven stages of grief about how last episode he was like, in, I, I forget. But like, are we at that last stage yet? Are we? Okay, okay. Glaze, let's go build him, build him up. Happy soundtrack. The head pan. Really? A lot of people shit on him for having like cold, mean looking eyes, right? Okay. Arc 2 Subaru, right? He's got maidenly fingers. This is the first time I've ever heard this. Slender fingers of a man sounds so. It sounds like a, what's the word? Like an oxymoron, but keep going. Let's go, Rem! Okay. She noticed all of keep that. Going. Okay, some people call Rem out for this. Some people genuinely think that Rem is a creep for staring at Subaru when he's sleeping. I've heard that comment and I was like, you really feel that way? Or are you memeing right now? Doki Doki. 
Oh. Because she loves you, bro. Rem! Oh, Rem's about to pop off. She's demonically possessed for you. You ready, boys and girls? The lighting is back. It was all dark up until now. Yeah, we about to get that rom-com scene, bro. Get the fucking wind ready. Get the light ready. My hero. <laughs> okay. Last time we had a curtain fluttering in the wind. You tell me there was doves ready. Some dude was ready. Ready? Go, flowers. Are you serious, bro? Let's go. He saved you exactly. Yeah, yeah, he did. He still did it though. Man, that arc too really, really just made her gush. My time has been stopped for so long. That's right, and she was frozen in time, unable to move forward, but Subaru's literal acknowledgement of her, right? That's what made her go beyond. Subaru really is her savior. I believe in you. True hero, man. Come on, boy. Be the hero again. This is Rem's voice after singing, yes. Counter. I will listen to you. Every one of Subaru's doubts. Rem counter. I expect something of you. I believe in you. There it is again. Is this happening? Is this... Is this ha... You really don't mind... Is Rem about to literally steal Subaru from Emilia right now? What the fuck? I mean, that was a confession! Wait, 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 wait! Let us start from here. Start from zero. Three zero. Mm. Just like how my time stops. We should start here. Start from zero. She said it! She said the line! She is such a peak partner, man. Mm. I love you. Just because Rem does that doesn't mean she's entitled to Subaru's love. Let's get that first thought. Let's first, first off, let's just say that, right? Subaru has no requirement or a, a, some sort of reason to love Rem just because of this. Love is an indescribable thing. You either do or you don't, right? Just right out of the way, that, that, that's, that's fair. It's just... After everything Rem did there, what about Rem's happiness, you know? Like, I am way... Like, imagine if he, like, led Rem on and then cucked her and went with Amelia. That's some scum shit. I would rather have him just immediately reject her without giving her any leads, right? That is the most, like, righteous thing you could do. Never lead someone on. Just be fucking true. But, oh my god, bro. After all that shit, I love Amelia. Like, oh.
Oh, dude. I know you do. Right, and there's nothing wrong with pursuing Amelia and rejecting Rim. There's nothing wrong with that. It's better that he's honest. It's just Rim. Rim. <laughs> oh, Rim's happiness. I like you because I like you. I like you. いまお前エミリアを助けたい。こうそんなら。みんなで笑っていられる未来に連れ出してやりって。オフコース、ユーロ。俺一人じゃ何も歩けるような自信がない。俺がまっすぐ歩けるように。間違っても気づけるように。You
Even before then, let's talk about some of the earlier stuff with Puck. I think one of the most interesting lines is about like the 1,000 shadows, half of what, you know, Satala could do. So maybe Satala has 2,000 arms that can attack. And Puck, you know, kind of fucks us up and we go. But, and other than that, the laughing part was very interesting about how it's the man that I hate myself. So Subaru obviously has such a strained past of living a pampered life and letting all that time be wasted. And this is who I am. You don't know me, Rem. I'm a pathetic loser. I think I can do everything, but I've never accomplished anything. And this is fucking arrogance. But this is the way he's perceiving right rem specifically mentioned that's the way you perceive yourself but i've seen something else i've seen a hero before i've seen you de demonically possessed to help everyone save me you're my savior subaru rem's voice acting the fucking glaze building him up truly the ultimate emotional partner this is literal wife material and when she confesses and when we think that subaru is about to accept Rem over Amelia. What does he say? I love Amelia. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> this is so fucked up. But again, I have no qualms with that. Subaru telling Rem straight up is honest and respectful. It's better that he lets her know now than leading her on. That will be way more scummy. It's just, I'm thinking from Rem's perspective, her happiness, her conclusion but if rem's happiness is seeing the man she loves be a hero and fuck this half elf girl then i guess i'm gonna sit on that goddamn chair in the cuck seat and be the best cuck queen i can that's it for me if you're still here though and if you enjoyed this reaction please like the video check out the other playlist for more content and until next time take care